Maintenance is key to successful machine performance. In this video, we will cover some basic combine maintenance tips to minimize downtime and keep your harvest as productive as possible. Starting at the front of the combine, proper feeder house conveyor tension not only ensures more reliable performance, with less downtime, it can also be gentler on the crop. To inspect, place the feeder house drum in the down position and position feeder house so it's parallel to the ground and engage the safety stops. Looking in from the front, check the position of the third and fourth lower slat from the front. If there is a head on the feeder house, you can check the tension through the two inspection holes on top of the feeder house. The slats should just barely touch the floor. If they are laying on the floor, the conveyor tension needs to be adjusted. If they are not touching, the chain could be too tight and tension may need to be reduced, especially on a chain conveyor. Make the same adjustments on both sides to ensure the conveyor tracks correctly during harvest. If your combine is equipped with a belt conveyor like this one, you will want to give the nut two more full turns, making it slightly tighter than a chain conveyor. An indication that the belts or chains are too tight is if there is a gap under the rubber stop for the cruise pilot pressure roller caused by the belts or chains lifting up inside as they are tightened. Once the proper tension has been reached, re-tighten the nuts on the adjustment rods and position the feeder house drum for the crop to be harvested. To adjust the tension, loosen the rear jam nut and the front securing nut on the threaded adjustment rod and rotate the inner nut counterclockwise to extend the rod and push the feeder house drum forward, tightening the conveyor. Before harvest, locate and inspect all of the drive belts to make sure they are in good shape and properly tensioned. All Lexion 8000, 7000, and 6000 combines use a common tensioner and tension indicator for most of their belts. To adjust, simply loosen the 18 millimeter jam nuts and adjust the spraying length until the red indicator meets tip to tip. Avoid over-tightening drive belts to maximize their operating life. Once the belt is tight, re-tighten the jam nuts. For the tensioners equipped with a detension nut, make sure that the detension nut is secured at the end of the threaded rod away from the spring. On new combines, the first 20 to 30 hours is when the initial belt and chain stretch takes place. It's important to inspect all drive belts and chains again and adjust as needed. This will help reduce the amount of adjustment needed in the future to keep harvest on schedule. The only belt tensioners that are different from the rest are the two used for the chopper, which are canister style tensioners. When inspecting these tensioners, look for a gap at the top of each canister between the canister and bracket. The internal spring will be visible through the gap. The gap is an indicator that the belt is too loose. To adjust this type of tensioner, simply loosen the two 18 millimeter jam nuts and rotate the inner nut clockwise until the canister stops moving and closes the gap and retighten jam nuts. Next, let's look at the two elevator chains. To inspect, remove the door from each elevator boot. Proper elevator chain tension is reached when the chains are tightened to a point where they can still barely slide side to side on the sprocket. If they can't slide side to side, they are too tight. And if they move easily or hanging at all off the bottom of the sprocket, they are too loose and can be prone to breaking if left unmaintained for too long. 
and if too loose, they can increase the potential for grain damage also. To adjust the clean grain elevator chain, loosen the four nuts on the face of the elevator boot, as well as the jam nut on the draw bolt and rotate the lower nut on the draw bolt clockwise, pulling down on the shaft and tightening the chain. Be sure to check and see how the chain slides side to side on the sprocket as you make each adjustment. To adjust the returns elevator chain, loosen the jam nut used to hold the elevator top shaft in place and rotate the nut at the top of the draw bolt clockwise, pulling up on the top shaft and tightening the chain. Once you have reached proper tension, tighten the two jam nuts and adjust the drive chain for the returns elevator if needed by loosening and pulling back by hand on the idler disc until the chain is snug. Do not use a screwdriver or sway bar as a lever, as this will only over tighten the chain. Before inspecting the air filter, wait for the alarm on CBIS display to sound, alerting the operator that the air filter needs attention. Always blow all dust and debris away from the area around the air filter before opening. Remove the cover from the end of the canister and pull out the filter. You can clean the air filter by bumping on the palm of your hand or using compressed air, blowing from the inside out. Too much pressure could damage the filter. If the filter is extremely dirty or damaged, replace it with a new one. Clean out the filter canister before reinstalling the filter and cover. Checking the hydraulic fluid level. To get the most accurate reading in the sight tube, swing out the unloading tube and lower the feeder house to the ground and lower the reel if the head is attached. The correct level should be between the two horizontal lines. If you need to add more fluid, be sure to consult the combine's operator manual for exact specifications of your combine. To check the coolant level, locate the coolant reservoir in the engine compartment and inspect the sight glass. Coolant should cover the entire glass when full. If the coolant needs to be added, be sure the engine is off and cool so there is no pressure and steam in the system and you should consult your owner's manual for the exact type of coolant for your model combine. Fill until the sight glass is completely covered and reinstall cap. Next, let's check the engine oil. The oil dipstick is located on the side of the engine. Pull out the dipstick and wipe it off and repeat for the first reading and also repeat as you fill. The oil level should be between the full and add marks on the dipstick. If you need to add oil, do so incrementally, checking after each time so not to overfill and always double check that you reinstall the oil fill cap. 